So as you can see, we are once again on the road and this episode is not going to be filmed in Accra. It is going to be filmed somewhere in the eastern region on your way to Kumase. And yes, we are going to a family who moved from the UK and currently living in Ghana. And yeah, you'll be surprised where they live. If you want to enjoy, stay tuned. Um, and yeah, it was very triggering for us as a family. And so we left and we found ourselves in, <laughs> we found ourselves because I'd rented out my place um, and we were no longer living at Daniel's mum's. So we found ourselves homeless in the UK. Hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode. My name is Hayford. If you don't know who I am, I'm a content creator, a cinematographer, and this is the Diaspora Transition episode where we interview people who move back from the diaspora and currently living here on the continent and are doing great things. So today, our guest on the show, this is not filming in Accra, by the way. It's in somewhere in the Eastern region. And I'm here with the life of the kings. So without further ado, Mr. Daniel and Madam Jarrell, welcome on the show. Oh, thank, thank you. you for having Thanks us, for right. having us. Yeah. Wow. So for those watching you right now who doesn't know who you are, can you briefly introduce yourself to the viewers? Okay, so I'm Daniel King. I'm Jarrell King. And we are Life with the Kings. Okay, so before anything, okay, let's just jump right into it. Why Ghana? Why? No, Me? <laughs> okay. Uh, why Ghana? So, in 2020, um, just at the beginning of the first pandemic mm -hmm. um, and uh, lockdown, I had a dream. Mm. And in that dream, I was given a vision. Uh, and it was very specific. Um, a vision that was given to me by the Most High. And I don't actually remember very much of the dream itself, mm -hmm. but I remember when I was conscious, I like literally just sat bolt upright out of my sleep mm -hmm. and I was quite emotional, like overwhelmed, but not yeah. like crying, but I just had, you know, tears. And I woke up Daniel, I was like, we have to go to Ghana. Wow. And that's, <laughs> that that's, is literally wow. to, why to Ghana. Add, to add to that though, when she told mm. me, we had always planned to go somewhere. We mm. always wanted to leave where we were at. We had tried Jamaica, mm -hmm. we were speaking of East Asia, we were speaking mm -hmm. of other countries in so Africa. Portugal was one. Portugal. Yeah. We were speaking of so many different places um, for many reasons. Mm -hmm. And when she, she told me, me um, you know, at first I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. But I didn't take it that serious. Yeah. And wow. one thing you don't normally say, I think you may have forgotten, you had a second dream. You had a second dream. And in this dream, because I remember the first dream you had where you woke up and, you know, you was, you know, a bit teary. But the mm -hmm. second dream you had, you woke up and you was in hysterics. She literally woke up and was like, told me for the second time, we need to get to Ghana. Yeah. And she was streaming, like, mm -hmm. proper in tears. And it was at that moment that I took it serious. Oh, wow. And it's from that moment that it took three months. For I'm curious, years. what kind of dream was that? What did you see in the dream, if you can remember a little no, bit? No, I, I didn't even remember the second time I told him. Wow. wow. Mm, wow. Yeah, yeah, I didn't remember that. Um, the, like the specifics. I remember telling him a second time, like, OK, no, seriously, we need to go to Ghana. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember, you know, um, how the story actually unfolded. Okay. So, so now I can't tell you what. <laughs> I, I like the way it's going though. But you are here. You yeah. made it on the continent. Mm. Yeah. Tell me, you you guys lived in Accra for some time. Yeah. Before, before you moved back, back. How, how long did you live in Accra for a year? Yeah. And, and then, then you guys, guys moved back, back here. here. Yeah. We lived okay. all over. We lived Tema. Okay. Uh, community Twenty Five. Okay. Abri. Abri. Adokram. Yeah. Um, and then you moved in. in Spintex. Yeah. Spintex, mm. Pachona. Okay. Then we moved here. Okay, so you moved with your children when you, you came here? We, yeah. yeah, moved with the children? Yeah, After, okay. we've, we've been, we've never been separated from the children. Okay. We've moved with them okay. everywhere. Oh, interesting. Wow. 
So I'm going to ask you this. The first night here, mm -hmm. sleeping here <laughs> in, in the, the middle, middle of nowhere. nowhere. Yeah. Tell, Tell me, me, how was the feeling like? Were you able to sleep? Go back memory lane. Mm -hmm. How was the first night sleeping here like? We were able to sleep. Mm. I think we slept like babies. She may have a different experience, but I recall it as we slept like babies the first mm. night because it's not something that was completely alien to us. Okay. When we were in the UK, we used to camp. Do you know what I mean? We'd go out and we'd sleep in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we have done stuff and we've slept in our car. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we've slept in places that we didn't even know what it looked like. It was just pitch black and we just pitched up and slept and then we woke up in the morning and realized where we're at. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're what do they call it, nomadic? Yeah. We're very nomadic. Okay. We like okay. to travel. So, so it's nothing new. No, so, so no. the first night in the tent was quite refreshing. Refreshing? Yeah, it was quite. Okay, okay. it's like going for camping. And then having uh, in Africa, that means <laughs> it's, it's on steroids, camping on steroids in Africa because the environment here is very different. What, what time did you guys arrive here? here? What time? It was night. Night time. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, it must have been like maybe after after seven, I'd say. Yeah. Because we literally came, we set up the beds because you brought the camping beds, and everything with us, made the beds. Um, everyone was exhausted. We had a very traumatic um, moving experience. Yeah. From my last that, place to this wow. one. Yeah. Um, and everyone was just mentally, physically tired. That day, Daniel had made a trip here already that day. Yeah, so he had stuff, mm. setting up the tent, yeah. and I had got stuck. Because you oh always get gosh. stuck. I had a big truck, and I got stuck Massive right truck. there. Wow. Over there is, was waterlogged, and I got stuck right there. <laughs> so it was like, oh, it took all day for you to it was get just, back. It was just a lot of stuff was going, was going wrong. Wow. Mm. So that first night's sleep was like, hey, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, and it was nice. I asked this because you moved from the UK, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. To me yeah, as a Ghanaian, it's the land of opportunities, the dreamland, the happy land, where inconveniences like this, you just told me about, you'd never come across, to some extent, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And you are in the middle of nowhere, and you are going to set up a tent, leaving everything behind. I don't understand. Make me understand. It's, it's funny that you have this perspective about the UK. Many do, um, that believe it, you know, mm -hmm. streets are paved with gold, it's the land of opportunity, you can go there and make um, something of yourself. And actually on the polar opposite to that, that's how we felt about Africa. We felt like it's the land of freedom, we can go, mm -hmm. and both are tainted. Mm. Both are tainted. Like, I can tell you this now because, you know, after being here nearly mm -hmm. two years in Ghana, and I, I said Africa before, let me talk about Ghana. Um, we've been here for two years in Ghana, and now I can see that, oh, everything I believed it to be, it's actually mm -hmm. not. Now, life is what you make it. You can make it what you make it. So you could go to the UK, and there are people in the UK having great lives in their world, in their perspective. And there's people here having great lives in their world, in their perspective, it's what they create. And there's people here that live a hard life. Mm -hmm. yeah, there, there are people here that are suffering, that mm -hmm. are struggling. Mm -hmm. And there are people in the UK that are living a hard life mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. are suffering and are struggling. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with the same problems and sometimes for very different problems. Mm -hmm. So, God, uh, the UK wasn't for me and my family. But, but what, what triggered your moving? Apart, apart from the dream, yeah. what triggered? Well, well just the constant, you know, so, go on. I just want to say, so just to give it a bit more background and some context. Mm. So before I had the dream, um, maybe the last three years prior to having that dream, we had just been through a series of very uncomfortable experiences. Tell me some more um, experiences. Okay, um, so we moved back to um, Daniel's mum's house to save some money and um, while we were there, uh, certain issues and had risen to the surface that needed to come up for healing um, and yeah, it was very triggering for 
us as a family. And so we left and we found ourselves in, <laughs> we found ourselves because I'd rented out my place um, and we were no longer living at Daniel's mum's. Mm -hmm. So we found ourselves homeless. Hmm. In, the in the UK, yeah. <laughs> in the I'm currently UK. searching for visa to go to the UK. They told me it's the is the place to be, and you're telling me, at one point you were homeless in the UK. Mm. And you know, homeless of my own making. So I'm very aware mm -hmm. of because I had a place. Mm -hmm. I had just rented it out. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was of my own making, um, or our own making. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, we were homeless because wow. you can't just kick someone else out of your home because you've now found, do you know what I mean? Like, that's that's yeah. the time we, we stayed in the car, when I said we stayed in yeah. the car. But before we got to the car, yeah. we stayed at a friend of mine's house um, for like a week or so. And it was just a, it was a pressure cooker that was really started from inside of us. Mm -hmm. And mm. so it was just it was building. spilling out into mm. our life. Yeah. Wow. Um, and you know, the, the reason behind it really and truly was the call for freedom, mm. the need for freedom um, to, I guess we, we were forcing ourselves or the, because we ask the most high for healing and to free us from, you know, everything <laughs> that's happened in, in the world, not just in the UK, um, even freeing us from our own trauma and pain. But that whole journey um, we ask the Most High to free us, mm. and <laughs> be careful what you ask for, <laughs> um, because it just so transpired that we were just taken, um, that was one of the experiences that we were taken on, just to help us, um, I guess, purge and shed a lot of the beliefs, the, the programming, just everything that we had, and so, um, after being at my friend's house for like a week or so, we got a tent and we went to Cornwall with the two boys. Tian was with her um, family and um, her dad's side. And uh, yeah, we were living in a tent for some time and traveling around Cornwall and mm. Devon. And Just that, that southern part of, wow. of, England. of England, yeah. yeah. Wow. And this is the UK we are talking about? Yeah. Wow. But what traumatised you the most, you living in the U UK, your life, your lifestyle? What traumatised you? That made you be like, oh, I don't, I'm down with this land. I just, mm. just I a, want a fresh start. The lack of freedom, mm. the mentality mm. of the people, and the, the system. Mm. The system that is not designed for somebody like me. Mm. Mm. Somebody like me who likes to be free, mm. who is governed by the Most High. Mm -hmm. That's my governor. Mm. That's someone in the UK watching you and he's like, why are you talking about freedom? You are in the middle of nowhere, a forest, mm -hmm. and you're talking about freedom. Look at me. I have shower, I have everything at my disposal. I can order food, it can be here in five minutes. Mm -hmm. I wake up to the clock every morning. I go to job, I come back, money, everything is ready. I am the one who is free. You are not free. But the lack, the lack of, you know, of awareness that they are caught up in consumerism. You speak about convenience. Mm -hmm. Like, I can have, I have a shower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I have a shower. The shower is being built. I have a home. I have those kind of things. What I don't want is the to be dictated to by consumerism, mm -hmm. dictated to by a system mm -hmm. that doesn't <laughs> doesn't grant me the the freedom that I know I deserve as a child of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a free man, a free man. Like I don't even believe in borders and and all of these things. I don't believe in those things. I don't believe in separation. Daniel, stop, please. I don't believe in separation. I don't believe in, you know, the division. I don't believe in the way they cut up Africa. I don't believe that I need a passport to travel. I don't believe, I don't believe in a lot of things. And, you know, there's, 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 there's some things that I can control. I want my passport. I do, because I want to be able to travel. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not silly. I want to be able to travel. 
but there's some things that I can control. And, you know, being, being uh, I can be in nature here where I'm surrounded by these plants that are medicinal and that can heal me. And, you know, I don't need to go to a hospital that shouldn't be trust, trusted. A hospital in the UK shouldn't be trusted. Don't get me wrong, there are times when you need the hospital in an emergency and there are some good people in the hospitals. There are nurses that want to be nurses and doctors that want to be nurses, but there's an undercurrent, there's an undercurrent of an agenda that is a business, a pharmaceutical company that I do not want to be a part of. The food, I don't want to be a part of processed food like that. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to slowly remove things from my life and from my children's life to give them something that I believe is better. So that sense of freedom, I'm here. Like, I, I'm, my ears are not being violated by traffic. Like, I can't control that in the UK. I can't control that in Accra. My ears are not being violated by people, neighbors shouting underneath me, above me, to the left of me, to the right of me, because that's how it is when you live in the UK. There's no space. I have space here. I have space here. I have, I have, this is my freedom. I guess it's just about what the definition of your freedom, freedom and my freedom. Is. Do you know what yeah, I mean? So, so if a man's telling me I ain't free, free well, well, what's your definition of freedom? Because I could, I could talk about this for days, mm. but really it gets down to what is your definition of freedom? Because mm. my definition of freedom is living in unconditional love, living in nature, not living around too much concrete, wow. trying to live around more natural materials, integrating with the people that are shunned by society, mm. integrating with people that, oh, the villagers. I hear other people in Accra talk about villagers and how, you know, the difference in their, poli their political social. status, their social mm -hmm. status. Yeah. Like, we're Economic all one people. Status. No one is better than me and I'm not better than anybody. So I like to be around these people. I have maximum respect here, brother. I have maximum respect here. Do you know why? Because they see something in me that is real. There are people that come here don't get that. But mm. here in the village, these are my people. Like, I get maximum respect from them. Do we have our ups and downs? Of course. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That can be healed by education. Mm -hmm. But for me, this is freedom. Will you say you are not respected in the UK? Definitely not. As, no. go on. No, I say, um, not our human rights. Mm -hmm. um, that's, like a, that's like a full stop there, really. <laughs> That's yeah. everything, isn't it? Yeah, just that, yeah. Everything. <laughs> we, can get, we, can get in, we can get into categories, do you know what I mean? Break it as down, a man, as a woman, as a black man, like as a black woman, as, do you know what I mean? As, there's many discrepancies and, and discriminations and racism that goes on in the UK and a lot of other countries. And it, it's here too, but just in different ways, in very different ways. And it's just about, well, where do you want to live? What do you choose? Mm. Life's about choices. Mm -hmm. We chose we this. this. So you chose this. We chose, chose this. this. Mm. The first time you ever stepped foot in Africa, Ghana, if you remember, how was that feeling like? I was extremely overwhelmed for a few reasons. Um, I had mixed emotions because the way I left the UK, I left um, pretty abruptly and um, I didn't actually tell my family when I was actually going. Like they knew I was planning on leaving, but I didn't tell them when I was going because I didn't want anyone to come to the airport. No, no one knew you were going to go? No. No. Not to your mum? She knew that I was planning on going to Ghana. Just not when? Just not. Okay. The date yeah. and the, the time. The only people that knew was our children. Oh, wow. We had these children and we have five more in the UK. Oh, okay. And you have eight children? Yes. Oh, wow. Really? So where are they? In the UK? Five are in the UK. Mm. Oh, okay. When are they coming back? Um, they're meant to be coming um, this Christmas, hopefully, to visit. And it was this well, summer, yeah. but the this prices summer. to yeah. come <laughs> to Ghana. And the regulations. Listen. <laughs> Now there's a vaccine or no entry. Hey, that's all of that. <laughs> so will you give them that transition you had before coming here or they're coming straight ahead? Um, the transition, like... You had like, transition. Yeah. You lived in Accra, yeah. um, oh, Tema, okay. um, no, no, other no. places before no. coming here. No, no. no. Would they be coming straight here? Yeah. Straight to the bush. 
Yeah. <laughs> straight to the bush. Straight to the bush. It's like, why are we, why are we, when, when they baptize the baby, they don't go, oh, suck me, suck me. They just dip him and get him out. And like, they're just dumb with it. They're going to do the same thing to them. Yes. Yes, because one thing about us, with all our children, all eight of them, we're, we're, we have a different parenting type of style to, to other people. Not everybody agrees with our parenting style. Not everybody agrees that we should tell, talk to our children about sex education mm -hmm. and let them understand their body mm -hmm. and how it works. Mm -hmm. not, no one, not a lot of people believe that you should talk to your children about the order of life mm -hmm. or about the Most High. Mm -hmm. Not many people wow. believe that you should even tell your children about the Most High, but we're very open. So we're very truthful with our children wow. here and in the UK. And we've always been. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's not nothing that is a secret. Nothing is a secret. Everything is, you know, is... <laughs> is out in the open. So we have no secrets with our children. Like, from the youngest to the oldest, they're all aware. I like that. I'll ask you more on the children. Yeah. But I saw a post you posted on your Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, I quote. You said, Life in nature has ways of healing you. Mother nature would give you exactly what you need. According to this statement, what do you need? Ask you, what do you need? I should go first? Go. Okay, so just let me just drink something. What do you need? Okay. Um, I need shelter. I need clean water. Mm -hmm. I need provision, like mm -hmm. food. I need peace. I need unconditional love. It's quite a long list. Um, <laughs> I need my family. I need the most high. And I need to be in, in an environment that reflects me. And being here in nature is literally surrounded on every side. Um, I am just bombarded with my reflection and you mean people who look like you um i was actually referring to Nature. like the trees and trees. yeah <laughs> that the life this this life is abundant here look around you it's mm -hmm. life everything's alive mm -hmm. and that's so one thing about the opposite you don't get this if you wanted to live like this in the uk you couldn't do that well the uk a lot of death is promoted mm like in every aspect of things, a lot of death is promoted. And I'd just like to um, give another word just so that some people might not receive that. Mm -hmm. But for me, the, it's the artificial. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of artificial just influences mm -hmm. there and that's not a reflection of me. I'm not artificial. Okay. I'm the, natural. In layman's terms, it's the artificial versus the natural. Mm. And we choose the natural. Yeah. Everything is artificial in the UK. Mm -hmm. Processed foods. And it, and also, in all fairness, we did um, look into purchasing land in the UK and the red tape, the bureaucracy, the hoops, the, the hurdles, price. like <laughs> the price. Mm -hmm. There was so much stuff. The regulation, you can't live, you could buy the land, but you can't live on it. It's like, mm, you, you could. You have a house on it, but you can't, you can't be in a tent residing on your land. But you have to have a business in order to have a house next. So the land has to be working land, like farmland. Um, you're, you're not free. We wanted a small holding, is what they call it in the UK, or a homestead, which is like a small farm. Like, you know, just somewhere we can grow our food, have some chickens and have a bit of space. Like, that's what it's called in the UK. And to, the, the red tape for small holdings and, and homesteads, it, it didn't make sense. There's no freedom in that. And then at the end of the day, you know. Hello, actually boy. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Come here. What is your name? Akel. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Akel. Akel. What's yeah. your name? Daniel. Daniel. Four. Wow. You're very, <laughs> Daniel. You're very handsome. <laughs> He's talking to you. Come look. He's talking to you. Come. Come. See, they just. Can you see? He just wants to move. Yeah. He just wants to be free. Yeah. He can't. I, I came. Here. I saw them just just so happy yeah. and playing. You know, and I was telling my, my um, camera crew, Nappy, mm -hmm. behind the camera, I'm like, I really like the fact that the kids are very happy. Mm 
because a lot of people are commenting mm. that you wanted to move to this environment. Mm -hmm. Your kids didn't choose. Oh. Mm. And you carried them. They could have been in the UK wearing all these Jordans, you know, going to this blah, 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 living a good life. That's, this, that's what they say. Mm -hmm. uh, you brought them here. Their perception of good. Yes. That's their perception of good. And I got here and I'm seeing something very different. Mm. What do you have to say to people saying stuff like that? Mind your business. Mm. First of all. Secondly, I will explain. <laughs> that was just the, the, <laughs> the war. Oh, mind your business, man. Like, mind your own. If more of us mind our own business, you know what I mean? The world will be better. But second of all, just to answer your question on an intellectual level, um, <laughs> they didn't choose to come here. Well, that's debatable. First of all, on two sides of the scale. One is that they're our children and our responsibility. Mm. Children want to do a lot of things in life. Children want to run off the edge of the cliff if they really wanted to, but until you give them the rules and tell them no, they can't do that. Was my grandma wrong for leaving Jamaica to go to America? That's debatable. Did her cho children choose to go or did she bring them along? Did they want to go at that time? I don't know. Did it better their life? That's debatable. Do you know what I mean? What am I meant to do? Say, son, mm -hmm. but we did do this. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go to Africa? And he says, no. Now, I'm going to consider that, obviously. But ultimately, as the parents, I get the final choice. They're not going to dictate. They want to go to Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. They want to go to Madagascar so they can meet the cartoon people. Mm -hmm. What am I meant to do? Take them there. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, this is, this is my life. Like, this is my life. And I'm responsible for their life. <laughs> I like why <her. laughs> It's so cute. <laughs> They're responsible for their life. Yeah. I mean, we're responsible for their, their life. life. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I said we're very truthful with, with our children, so we're open and we want their opinions. Mm -hmm. And actually, our children wanted to come to Africa. They wanted to come to Africa. Do we have a teenager that was iffy about coming? Of course. Like, she's a teenager going through puberty. The natural things she's going through. Do you know what I mean? And she's actually going through them because she's eating the right things that make sure she goes through them. And it's natural that, you know, she's made friends over here and she comes here to a new environment. But she has to realise that we have her best interest at heart. Mm. We have her best interest at heart. And judging from our experiences, we know what is good for our children. Are we learning all the time? Of course we are. We're open for other people's experiences and to say, you should do it this way. We have those people in our life. Thank you, Auntie Beverly. Thank you, Auntie Shirley. For those kind of people that give us some sort of stability. And Uncle Linford. And Uncle Linford. Those kind of people give us some stability. These are grown people that have, have, are giving us wisdom and, you know, guiding us and mentoring us as we do this. So we're not just out here completely alone. Not anymore. Now we have some solid mentors, some elders, like mm. 65 and overs, like that real Wisdom. solid people yeah. who, who actually are very much aligned with us and think exactly how we think, but they just help us to navigate, navigate it mm -hmm. the best way. Okay. But why do you think it's, it's dangerous to, to um, let or allow your kids to grow up in the UK? Or it's not safe? I heard you made a statement uh, like that on, online. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. I feel like I'm just passionate out here, so I'll just talk all day. So let's hear some feminine perspective. Um, so I've, I've lived in the UK my whole life. I was born there. I was born in London. And I've lived in various areas in London, um, actually north, east, south and west. And throughout my childhood, and my early adulthood, <laughs> I have experienced so much trauma. Mm. I have gone through so many, oh man, unnecessary, <laughs> to be quite honest, mm -hmm. unnecessary um, experiences. Tell that... us a few to get the perspective right. <laughs> okay, all right. Because people are, are watching and they hear you, mm. but they don't hear you. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, okay, I'll, I'll tell you the one that I think was really the catalyst for my life um, taking a downward trajectory mm. um, before I came to Ghana, that is. 
So uh, when I was 12, um, my mum, for her own reasons, decided that it was better for me and her if I went into foster care. Mm. And, um, you know, my social services um, to be, I guess, my guardian. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's where I went. And I lived with a foster carer for a few years and uh, moved around to different children's homes um, where I was exposed to things that children shouldn't be exposed to. And I found myself in a lot of situations that um, resulted in me losing my innocence far too early and there's consequences to that and they're not just physical they're emotional they're mental they're spiritual and it was all because I didn't have guidance mm. I didn't have protection mm -hmm. I didn't have someone covering me and looking out for my best interest okay. and what I realized is that as I, as I grew and as I got to meet other young people going through the same things, or in fact, far worse than I was ever going through, oh my goodness, far worse. Um, I realized that, well, I'm not alone. There, there is a definite failure in, in not only the system on a whole but within every single component that makes up that system so the school system um, the care system the banking system mm -hmm. every institution there's no village there's no village there's no one who is actively consistently protecting the innocent life. What was your what was father at this time? Um, my biological father, um, I met when I was 14. Um, he didn't know that I existed. And my mum had told me, always told me, and therefore I had a relationship with another man who believed he was my father and I believed he was my father as well. So. Um, when he asked for a DNA test, it turned out, which was so random, mm. but it was for me, because I needed to know who my father is, wow. <laughs> obviously. But, you know, it turned out that I wasn't his child. Um, my mum then introduced me to the man that is my biological father. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, so that was that half of the story. But the other half, my stepfather, which is who raised me to a certain point, till... Um, him and my mother broke up, mm -hmm. so I think I was maybe about t 10 or so. Um, he, because he'd broken up with my mother and he was my stepfather, our relationship, um, although I know that he did his best mm -hmm. what, with what he could do in that situation, because I wasn't his biological mm -hmm. child, you know, there were certain limitations there because for him and my mum weren't together anymore. Okay. Um, and so soon after he left, Things, the relationship between my mum and I um, became very strained and broke down very quickly. Uh, like, you know, so it yeah. happens with single parent households. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I guess that was part of the reason why wow. she... So that was your upbringing? Yeah. And you didn't want that for your children? No. And not that specifically because um, I will never abandon my children. Mm -hmm. You know? um, I will never send them away. Mm -hmm. um, I'm fiercely protective mm -hmm. of my children. And they are the main reason why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Because I know that they deserve a life, mm -hmm. um, a childhood, mm -hmm. um, the opportunity um, to be free. Wow. <laughs> that wow. is like the bottom line. This is very touching. What, did, what do you perspective do you, do you have on that? 
On what specifically? Um, how it's dangerous. You would never um, advise people to, you know, well, people can always choose what they want. Mm. You can, you can, what, are you talking about the UK? Yeah. yeah. You can navigate the UK, you can. Like, we can navigate the UK. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I can run that gauntlet if I want to run that gauntlet. Mm. I just don't choose to run that gauntlet. Mm. You know, there's, there's, when you talk about danger, there's definitely danger. Do you know, I started getting get to a stage living in, you know, a, chief, a, a leafy part of, of, of London, so not so much city, but living in a leafy part of London. Um, it's more suburban. More suburban, yeah. Mm. I started to see that the city antics were leaking out to me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? What so are some of them? I started to worry about my children's safety just mm. going out. They can get into an altercation with another youngster. Mm. The mentality, let me show you something. Have you been to the UK? No. Okay, so the mentality of, of the Ghanaian youth Mm -hmm. And the mentality of the, 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 the okay. UK youth, very different, brother. Like, these people here are not quick to pull out guns and knives mm -hmm. to shoot or to stab another. And I'm talking about 14-year-olds. Talk about Maybe younger. I'm talking about 11-year-olds, really? yeah, 10-year-olds, yeah. way up to men. Post-code wars, you know, so because you're from... Accra and I'm from, you know, Greater Accra. Mm -hmm. We don't like you. I don't care. We is this like happening in white community or it's just a black? It would be no. To be honest, it would be like sorry. It would be like more like cantonments and Osu. That's yeah. that's yeah. like your yeah. your neighbouring. Yeah. So you're touching anyway. So yeah. you're usually gonna have to go through there to get to so the other side. So there's always a risk of some danger. Yeah, and, and that's how serious and how close it is. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So that that is one of the reasons. It contributed to, to your move back. Absolutely. Yeah. One, of, one of many Absolutely. reasons. Absolutely. One of many. Like that one. Someone, Someone said the West is doomed. The US is doomed. The UK is doomed. Do you think they, it's doomed? You, know, you want me in the political world, yeah? <laughs> You're in a start now. <laughs> I'm not really in a politics, you know. I remember I heard Bob, Bob Marley say one day that mm. I ain't I ain't in our politics, you know. Okay, we'll skip that. I ain't I ain't in our life. <laughs> no, 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 we're not skipping it. We're not skipping anything. That's what we're saying. I and I deals with life. Mm. Mm. You see them politics or politics. Mm -hmm. Let them vote. Red, blue, I don't care who they want to vote. I don't, I'm not... I don't want that to affect my life. Mm. I don't want it to affect my life. Will it? In some way, maybe. But I can limit that. I can limit the way that affects my life. If I'm in a crowd, that would affect me heavily. Mm -hmm. Out here, it doesn't really affect me that much. Mm -hmm. I don't get involved in what he's saying or what she said or what this party wants to do or what that party wants to do. Do you know the party that matters? Mm -hmm. the, king's, the king's party. Mm -hmm. We're our own party. Do you know what I mean? We're our own, we're, we're sovereign people. We're, we're self-sustainable or aiming to be self-sustainable. Yeah, that's the... I've seen, I've seen what you have here. It's it's a very huge land. I've mm -hmm. seen around. Later on, I was I was show the camera out, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's beautiful. You have your own uh, trees. You have plantain. You have okra on the land. You have vegetables mm -hmm. that are growing. Where I see a future where you're independent, not just by food, but everything. Mm -hmm. Water, electricity. You already have electricity. I mm -hmm. came here, and so this is the freedom to you and your family. Mm -hmm. But living in Accra, trying to live in a five-star level apartment, that's not freedom to you. No. Someone said Accra is an extension of the West. What do you think? Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. I think I said in one of my other videos, it's Babylon 2.0. Oh. <laughs> right. So you have Babylon in the West, and then you have, you know, it, they were here. Mm -hmm. They colonized. They, they, do you know what I mean? So they were here. So obviously, wherever you go, you can, you can still smell the skunk, the, okay. the stink of the skunk when he's left. Let me ask you know this. I, mean? yeah. the, I don't know what difficulties you've, you've been through and how did you overcome them when you moved, moved here? To Ghana? Yeah. And no, to here. Yeah, a, to here. Yeah. yeah uh, difficulties. Well, we're still in one of the difficulties, and that's building a house. Oh, wow. Like, trying to build a house here in Ghana is not easy. It's wow. not easy, or... Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I say. What right? is the difficult part? It's, well, it's building a house. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never built a house before. Okay. I'm building a house. I'm being a project manager that has to micromanage. Mm -hmm. 
because you have to micromanage. Like when you're in places like this, like Jamaica, like Ghana, you have to micromanage. That's been a difficulty navigating that. Um, trying to get the right price because I'm seen as a brony or and there's, a, <laughs> there's an a brony price and then there's, do you know what I mean? There's wow. the, the Ghanaian price. Wow. So trying to navigate that and the way I do that is just gain the respect. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Gain the respect of people mm. and how you do that is just by being you and being truthful wow. and being righteous. I saw the architecture of the, of the place mm -hmm. and how beautiful this line is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Who designed it and how much did it cost? Well, we both designed it. By yourself? Um, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're the organic architects for this. <laughs> oh, really? Organic architecture, yeah. organic, you know, interior design. Landscaping, organic everything. Organic landscaping. Mm -hmm. Like, everything is... Mm -hmm. we, we're, when you're self-sustainable, mm -hmm. you're trying to do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. And do we have to bring in plumbers and help and masons? And yeah, because I'm not a mason, but I laid, I laid down the first wall of this house. Wow. Do you know what I mean? I laid that down. Like. Wow. Me and Elaine. Where did you learn that from? You watch on YouTube? YouTube. <laughs> Don't, where do we learn everything right now? But I tell you right now, it was already in me. Okay. Like, it was already in me. I just needed to, like, I've already been given hands. Mm -hmm. I was already given hands. I just needed to bring that creativeness out. How important was it for you to own a land? To own a land, to, to point to the land that this is, this is my land. I can grow whatever I want to grow. I can build. Why, how important is that? It was important as my freedom. It was important as, you know, me owning something. Mm. Like, mm. it's very hard to own something in the UK. Mm. Even when it's stamped, yeah, you own it. There's some red tape underneath there. Mm. Do you and, know what I mean? And like, I just want to say like, own in the sense that, well, when you die, you leave it here. Mm. So for this moment, you know, and um, it's more like stewarding. Stewarding. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Stewarding. I'm sh mm. I steward this land. I don't own this land. Mm. I'm stewarding this land. Mm. And, you know, I, I can't do that in the UK. Like, I'm limited with what I can do in the UK. Very. Like, unless, even if I've got millions, I can buy the land, yes? That don't mean it's mine. That don't mean at any given time they can't just come and take it off of me. Mm. Like, they have certain rules that tell you how much you own. Like, six feet deep and... Do you know what I mean? There's certain rules and... You know, we just wanted to, to, you know, we're not, when you're not happy by someone that is teaching you or governing you, mm -hmm. in the political world, what do you do? You vote them out. Yeah. You vote them out. No, they're not doing good, so I vote you out. Mm -hmm. All I did is just voted everybody out. Like, the red and the blue, like, everybody, the please. Whole system. The whole no, system. No thanks. No thank you. I don't want to vote. Like, oh, no. I don't want to vote. Like, I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to be a part of that. <laughs> I choose not to be a part of that. Okay. Now, let's talk about the kids for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. They are in the middle of nowhere, they say. <laughs> yeah. How do you educate your kids? Okay, so... First of all, I think we'd have to define what educate means. Mm. Um, and... For me and my family, Education is something that I believe I can only learn from the Most High mm -hmm. and through the Most High. Mm -hmm. And there's a way that people, men and women, um, who have the spirit of the Most High in them, mm -hmm. there's a way that we resonate with each other, we communicate with each other, you know? Mm -hmm. We're on the same wavelength. Um, we hear each other, we see each other, mm -hmm. and it's something that has to be felt also. Mm -hmm. And so I find um, wisdom and knowledge, or I receive wisdom and knowledge from people that or men and women that I resonate with and sometimes directly from the Most High as well, from nature, um, from all things natural and organic, there's lessons everywhere if you're paying attention. If you're conscious, you'll receive information, you'll receive wisdom, 
you'll receive a greater inner standing. It's just an inner standing for me. It's just a knowing, an all knowing that you can't explain, but no one can tell you that you're wrong because, you know, and that is the education or the programming that I choose with my free will to give to my children. Wow. <clears throat> what do you have to say to those watching who thinks, oh, leave them. They've lost their, they've lost their mind to leave the paradise we have in the UK. <laughs> and to go and live I in love. a forest and call that a freedom. Mm. What I message love, I love, I love. do you have for that? Maybe? What message? Mm. <laughs> Each to their own. But if I was you, I'd get out. Mm. If I was you, I'd choose a better choice. I'd make better decisions. Mm. But again, that's perspective. Some people are happy as Larry in the UK. They're happy, they're, they're doing their thing. It's because what, it's what, it's what they feel is, do you know what I mean? But to say that we're crazy, well, you know. Crazy feels pretty the good to me. They, <laughs> crazy is yeah, crazy. The system, yeah. and they wake up nine to five, they got a job, they report to a boss, they do mm -hmm. all these different things. And that sounds like slavery to me. <laughs> That's what that sounds like. That really? sounds like, yeah, mm -hmm. like the new slavery, debt. Mm -hmm. Like, they're tied to their money. Mm -hmm. They're tied to their money. Mm -hmm. Like, and I know at this point in the comment section, they'll be like, but you use, of course we use money. Mm -hmm. Of course I've got a passport. Of course I use money. Mm -hmm. But I don't choose that as my God. Mm -hmm. I don't choose to, to chase money. Mm -hmm. I don't choose to worship, to, to worship money. Mm -hmm. I choose to be in a life where I can try and learn to live without it. Where I can barter with my neighbours. Mm -hmm. Brother, you come help me with my POP because I'm struggling. <laughs> and I'll come help you with your POP. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I've got people coming here. So brother, Kwame, build a guest suite because it will bring business to you. Mm. Brother, there's people coming to this area, you know, so you know what you need to do? My brother, you need to get your shop up to scratch because mm. business is coming in. Like, that's bartering, you know? I'm giving him knowledge, he's giving me knowledge. He's giving me labor, I'm giving him labor. He's providing us with a service. He's we're giving me a service <laughs> and we're providing him with a service. We can live like that. We yeah. have lived like that. Mm. But On we have this scale. thing that's called money that people die over every day. Mm. People argue over in politics over every day. Mm. Do you know what I mean? People, People are not sell, sell their soul sell for. Sell their soul for. Their hum, sell their humanity. Some of my neighbours are not eating mm. the way they should be. Mm. Are not getting the education that they should be. Are not. Are not living are not the way living that they should be. The way they should be because of money. Mm. But we're here to teach our local community mm. how you can live a full and joyful life mm. without the need for money. Wow. Without the need and for have money. abundance. Like, and have and have abundance. They have. Yeah. Because of their program, when they believe that they're poor, but I see the wealth. Mm -hmm. I see all the wealth that they are surrounded with. I'm like, oh wow. If they only knew how rich they were mm -hmm. in the eyes of the Most High, it would, that perspective change, that paradigm shift would completely transform their life. You know? But we, we understand that it's, that will take time and it's not enough to just tell people and that's why you know we can have the interviews and stuff and people can hear it but you know what we're like let's just be the example mm, yeah. let's just do it and when we do it and we show mm, everyone and they get to see, see it because some people need to see to believe really? but i don't we don't you know mm. we live by faith so this this light this little light of mine like do you know how far it goes mm. oh snappy mm. australia amsterdam mm -hmm. i know Jamaica, places that I've Canada, never been to, that I dream places to I've to. never been to, yeah. this light is shining. Mm -hmm. And some people receive it and some people don't. Mm. Some people actually see this light as darkness, like you said, some of the viewers. But this light is shining for many that see it as light. Mm. Wow. And it's like a calling. Wow. Come, come and experience mm. this experience. In mm. fact, come to life. Mm. We, let's provide a place for you to come to. And then you life. can... Life. Let's talk about life. Let's you spell it L-Y-F-E. Why? To love yourself for eternity. Wow, well, that's what it means. Yeah, to love yourself for eternity. That was our intention. That's why we're here. And, yeah, so if you come to life, you're coming to love yourself for eternity. Amazing. Yeah. Now, my last guest on the show, he made a statement 
and I think it's very, very important. I mm -hmm. want to say it to you and ask you a question based on that. Tim Swain, by the way, mm -hmm. and he said, you can have everything, but if you don't have identity, you have nothing. Mm. You have to know who you are. What is your identity? Who you are? <laughs> or who are you? <laughs> I am a child of the Most High. <laughs> okay. <laughs> most High. I am a child of the Most High. I feel like you should slow it down. I? Mm. Yeah. Am. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. child mm -hmm. of the Most High. Who is the Most High? <laughs> you didn't hear me. I, I told am you a slow child. It down. You it's too fast. Yeah. It's too fast. <laughs> the last part, you have to slow it right they down. Asked this. Who is yeah. the Most slow High? Slow it down. The answer is the Most High. Too fast. Let me have a go. The Most High. Most High. That's that's who that's, that's who the it. most high is. People people get caught up. I know what you're trying to say. I know what you're trying to say. Mm. People get caught up in is his name Jesus? Is his name Buddha? Identities, is his name, personas. Is his name Allah? Like, you know? Is it a woman? Is it a man? Is he black? Is he white? Is he tall? Is he short? Born limitations. Lim all I hear is limitation. Limitation. Just, limitation. What kind of limitation. God is that? What kind of God is that that is limited? Not my not my most mine is the most high. high. Period. Period. Has a multitude of names. A multitude of names. Imagine if we all, fought, imagine if we all, brother, mm. listen to me. Imagine if we all fought like this. Imagine if the Muslim, the Christian who kill each other every day. The Jew. The Jews, the Buddhists, the, the Hindus. Sikh, the Hindu. Imagine if they all just took it back. But I forget about if it's, the, it. if it's the cow, if it's the, if D it's this. Don't even name any more idols, so please. So would you say you are more spiritual than religious? Because most high, I've met people who use this most high mm. to refer to who they believe in. Yeah. And most of them identify as Israelites, Jews. Do you identify the same? Mm. No? No. Okay. Go on, ask me a question. What do I identify again? Tell me again. <laughs> I identify as a child of the most high. I'm not an Israelite, not Jew, like Hebrew, Christian. <laughs> Like Muslim. Click. Imagine I've been all of them. Mm. Imagine I've been all of them. Mm. I've not been an Hindu, I've not been a Sikh, <laughs> but I've been a Muslim, a Christian, a, a, a Hebrew Israelite, a, a pro black. I've been all of these things. But I decided to strip it back and you bring don't it. Don't forget New Age, I'm gonna add that one in. Oh, there. New Age. New this, Age. Oh, I'm just spiritual, I'm just New Age. You know, I do yoga, I do this. Kudos to you. But for me, I strip it back because all of that's confusing. If we just take it back to all praises to the Most High and a Muslim says, you know what, yeah, all praises to the Most High and then a Christian says, all praises to the Most High. Like, why are we trying to figure out the story? Mm -hmm. Let's stop trying to figure out the story. Mm -hmm. Like, can we just give thanks to the Most High and then, because we're killing each other over the story. Mm -hmm. We're fighting over the story. There's division over the story. Let's... Even people that. are saying God is not real. Yeah, that's, that's a whole next division. Mm -hmm. Believers and non-believers. Okay. I don't know about those people. Now, let me, let's go back. The night before your flight to Ghana, okay, you go back in time, just woke up, and the next day, you'd be going to Ghana, and you are given the choice to, hey, stay in the UK. Will you take it, or you'll still make the move? Oh, no. Yeah, I still have to, we still come. There's no doubt or question about it. No, no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> no, definitely not. Not in that area, anyway. <laughs> so, where is all this going? What do you see the future like? Well, I do try to stay as present mm -hmm. in the moment as I can. Mm -hmm. um, it helps me to remain in gratitude um, and to see the abundance of blessings that I have and that I'm literally surrounded by. Um, it also helps me to not um, be in control, 
you know. I need to go with the flow I, and I, I'm always trying to surrender to the will of the Most High um, over my life because I, there's no way I could know everything, you know. I don't know my future. So, you know, the things that I aspire to have are more healing, more love, between, more surrounded by loving, clean-hearted, pure-hearted men and women and children. And, you know, I'm okay with whatever that looks like. Mm. Okay. Interesting. But you might have a different answer though. No, that's perfect. Okay, okay. Let's go for a quick commercial break. Yeah. is your daughter. Mm -hmm. Is she the first or? For me? Yeah. Yeah, Tian is my first child and my first daughter. <laughs> <laughs> my only daughter. Well, Tian, welcome to Ghana. <laughs> I want to ask you. you this. The first time you, you came here mm -hmm. when you slept, how was that feel? How did it feel like the first night? Oh, we'll never forget that. It was really nice. We yeah. came here, um, we got here pretty late, so we didn't get to set up everything um, mm -hmm. inside the tent. Mm -hmm. But um, what we did have, we literally put up our beds the same, <laughs> like as soon as we got there. And it was just really nice. Mm -hmm. It was comfortable, like, it was just like a new feeling, like waking mm -hmm. up and then going outside and then mm -hmm. just seeing like all of this. Wow. It was really nice. You yeah. see tree, trees around you, <laughs> yeah. vegetables. Yeah. What does that mean to you as a, as a 15 year old? I'm 16 now. 16? <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 16 years old. Um, but um, I guess it's just like, mm -hmm. it's just new. It's very different from how I used to live, mm -hmm. um, always being in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was just a really new experience for me. Okay, so if they give you the chance, choose the UK or here, then <laughs> think about it very carefully. Okay, you can explain why you, you decide you mm -hmm. decide to choose Ghana, but which one will you go for as it stands now and based on your experience you've been mm -hmm. here for how long have you been in Ghana now? Um, almost two years. Almost two years. Yeah. Which one will you choose? I choose Ghana. Choose Ghana? Yeah. Why? Because I've been asked this question a lot. Mm -hmm. Like I've been fighting to go back to London mm -hmm. and to go back to the UK and to just be back there. But I realised it's not the best. <laughs> it's not the best place for me, mm. um, personally. Like for other people, maybe. But being here and. Here on the land and in Ghana in general, mm -hmm. like even being in Accra and being in the city, it's just really nice. Like mm -hmm. it's very different, but it's a place where I felt like I can be myself mm -hmm. and I don't have to try and fit in with anybody wow. and try and like, yeah, just basically fit into society okay. and just be like perfect. I don't have to do that. Mm, so. Interesting. What, do you, what, what would you say you've learned that here that you wouldn't have been able to learn in the UK? Um, well, here exactly to yeah. survive in nature. So, mm. if there was ever a time where I could, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, she okay, could survive. we got oh, go, yeah. like, I could survive. Like, she is so good, she could survive on her own, uh, like, Bear grill style. Yeah. She could survive. Yeah. Sometimes she's just, like, what are you doing? Oh, chopping some coconuts. What are you doing? Oh, lighting a fire. She, she, chop coconut she chops herself. coconuts yeah, by herself. She does everything. Is it what I'm thinking it is? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, cutlass. Yeah, yeah. Chum, chum, so, chum. There's a big one over there, like, yeah. she's a real. Imagine, Bush girl. imagine that coconut was given to you <laughs> in the UK. That I would just be like, you wouldn't be able to. What am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> you probably, <laughs> get a hammer. You probably get a hammer. 
just what will you say this experience has given you? Will you say you moving to Ghana and having all this experience has made you strong? Definitely. As an individual. Definitely. It definitely has. Um, like, just being in the city or in London, it makes you... Um, what is it, Mom? There's too much convenience. Questions, but it's okay. Convenience? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So because of that like we get lazy mm -hmm. and you just expect everything to just come to right. you like i never knew that you had to pay for gas oh really i didn't know how that <laughs> whole like i didn't know how that whole thing worked <laughs> and, and then i remember my auntie asking me to go and get um go and pay for the gas top up the gas i was like what i thought it was just like piped into your house and that was mm. it like you don't have mm. to worry about it but being <laughs> here like if our gas tank runs out now we've got to go and get gas so oh i'm on sitting on a fire <laughs> yeah it's definitely um, made that was me a lesson for you yeah yeah now, because, because she's done a lot of the cooking mm. like since we've been in this situation mm. the gas thing for her is an issue <laughs> like, if she runs out of gas she can't cook do you know what oh, i have to oh, you, get you cook a whole yeah she does cook but she yeah. has yeah. do you use to cook in the uk um yeah but not that much mostly yeah. bake yeah mm. i used to bake a lot okay. so but here I've definitely cooked a lot more. Um, I've learned how to cook new things as well. Mm. I've learned how to cook on an open fire. So it's like just being a, like learning all these skills so that I can just be more adaptable and versatile right. things. So. If your friends are watching this, mm -hmm. okay, your age, <laughs> tell them what are they missing out? We're well, missing out on life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Living in the city is, it's okay, it's nice. Honestly, I really like it. Like, mm -hmm. She loves Accra. I mm. love Accra, absolutely love it. When mm. we, we stayed in Accra for about a week and I was just having like the time of my life, I <laughs> nail shop, enjoyed myself. Um, but definitely being here is an experience that everyone needs and mm. it's hard, it, it's very hard. So um, are you telling them they should come? Yeah, really? definitely. Like. For some people, it might not be to live here, but mm -hmm. just to stay here for a period of time so you can get the experience, so you can learn how mm -hmm. to deal with different situations, mm -hmm. um, is definitely like a lot of help. Okay. Before I let you go, okay, what would be an advice if you had to say something that people are hearing you, they to reason with you, an advice, something? What would that message be? Um. I'd say come prepared and don't have any expectations because most people expect living out here to, some people expect it to be easy, yeah I can do it, it's nothing, it's just living out in nature like it's supposed to be easy but honestly it is very hard and we make it look easy, <laughs> we really do and you don't see the day-to-day -day stuff that we have to go through either dealing with other people or dealing with oh something's gone wrong now we've got to figure it out mm -hmm. uh, just there's so many different things like even dealing with our own rubbish like mm -hmm. we have to deal with that whether it's putting it in a pile and burning it mm -hmm. so that we can shrink it down mm -hmm. or whatever but most people Recycling. just yeah or yeah. recycle <laughs> like people just put it in a bin and then someone takes it and then they forget mm -hmm. about it but mm. here you have to learn how to do all these things and people just come with the expectation that it's just easy and it's just like oh yeah i can do it yeah yeah, yeah. but it's it's, it's not, not. <laughs> it's not thank you you're so smart <laughs> thank you yeah. thank you so go on. yeah go ahead um Jan has always been a very special child and i know what parent don't think their child is special, of course. Um, <laughs> and I, I am biased because she's also my baby. But yeah, me too. honestly, <laughs> you are my baby too, Daniel. <laughs> um, but I'm a 33-year-old woman. Daniel is a 42-year-old man. And... She has been with us on the same level, going through the same experiences <laughs> and absolutely thriving. Like she has been 
just excelling um, in all areas of her life. And like all of us, we go through our different um, challenges. That's what I want to call them because they're challenges. But she passes them with flying colours every time. And she never gives up. Just like me, just like him. We don't give up. And this experience has shown me, because I want to make it about Tian, but this experience um, has shown me just that, wow, Tian is really capable of anything. Like anything she wants to do, anything she wants to do, she does it. She's so powerful. She is so powerful and just makes me just, as a mother, I would just want all mothers to feel this sense of overwhelming pride and achievement for their child, especially my daughter, because she is just a, a miniature version of me in the mm -hmm. sense that I'm her mother, you know? And I'm just so in awe of her. Wow, are you proud of her? Two years and still standing strong. <laughs> it's not just, it's the it's the growth though it's the growth and it's not something that people will, can always see mm -hmm. you know i uh, met a family who moved from the uk and they wanted to understand mm. the things you have to go through emotionally mentally mm. trying to bring your children here safety mm. do you do you feel safe for your children or have you ever felt like you're scared for them you know, like, so this is a question I also want Tian to answer, but I'll just say this one little thing that Tian is the oldest sister. Mm. And as most firstborn children know, especially, you know, girl children, that comes with a huge responsibility. Yes. You know, she has younger siblings and she often steps up and takes over as the role of mother mm -hmm. um, whenever I need her to. And she's gotten to the point, because she has faced her fears, because she never gives up, she lost because she is fiercely determined and strong, that, and compassionate too, because that's the hard balance to get right. I know, because I struggle with it every day. But, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's way too much laughter. Um, but yeah, she has really, found the balance of being strong and still yet compassionate um, with herself, with her brothers, you know, with e all the, the children from the village, because we have dozens here sometimes, and she is loved by everyone here, like from here to Amanese, mm -hmm. that's far, you know, mm -hmm. everyone knows Tian, wow. all the children. I like heard her. she also drive uh, the Aboboya yeah. around everywhere. Yeah, here, it's broken down now, that it's she's a strong woman. Exactly she left it down, down, the left it down the road. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, what is your favourite thing about Ghana, though? Most favourite? Uh, my favourite thing about Ghana? Well, that's hard, because there's a lot of, like, there really lot of things. things. Just pick yeah. one. Um, Most favourite? Yeah. I've actually never thought about this. This is really? a hard question. I'll yeah. give you time. How many minutes do you need? <laughs> um, my favourite thing Most about Ghana. It can be anything. I think it's like just the, the new experiences. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because it's like... <clears throat> there's just so many things different about Ghana that it's like... This is only like... I've only been to two other countries. Mm. Where and where? I've been to Dubai, but I was five, so okay. I was still pretty young, so I okay. don't really remember it. Mm -hmm. And then I came here, mm -hmm. so all my life, all I've known is London. Mm. And there's a lot of things to do there, and you can go out, go to cinema, go out with your friends and everything. Mm -hmm. But here, um, there's not that much things to do, mm -hmm. like, for people my age mm -hmm. anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so just learning that, it's kind of made me take some more time for myself, mm -hmm. because there's not a lot of things to do mm -hmm. with everyone else. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, not to waste your time. Yeah, mm. exactly. So I've been focusing more on myself. So I think that's I'm one sorry. thing I like. It's more chill here. Okay. It's like, yeah. It is very chill. Yeah. I want to sleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want her to answer the question about about them being afraid. Mm -hmm, yes. Yeah. Because yes. I know she had some fears. Mm -hmm. So 
I think it'll be healthy for the, yeah. the other young people to hear. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, just okay. Go back the first night that that you come in here. Yeah. Night, <laughs> middle of nowhere. <laughs> You've been driving to the, the uh, forest for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, mm. and you arrived and mom says, this is a tent, we are, we are going to sleep here. <laughs> I think because um, we came here like a couple times before, we came to see the land, okay. and we were working, we started working on the land um, from early, so that we can get it ready for us. Um, to move in. Yeah, to move in. So I kind of got used to okay. it. I kind of met some people around the area, like okay. the family that lives down there. Okay. Um, they got a daughter that's 13 okay. and a son that's um, 18. So mm. we're all just friends and mm. stuff. So that's oh, really so you've nice. Got friends here. Yeah. So from like this side, and then when you go down the other way, wow. um, I know quite a few people around here. So. <laughs> um, but in terms of fears, like if I was scared of anything. Mm. There was little ones like you know like the snake and snakes so stuff <laughs> yeah like you've not seen any today no, no, no we don't see them we don't um see them um, not often not right? often no mm -hmm. we saw Is that one only fears snakes not really no not really no. have you ever killed a snake yes in here in Ghana yeah. mm. would you have been able to yeah. do that to you? where here right there <laughs> can you imagine yourself killing a snake in the UK <laughs> no. <laughs> no no the only he was time my I saw hero a snake that day was <laughs> Um, the only time I saw a snake was um, one of my friends, he had a pet snake, mm. and that was like primary school. Yeah. And he showed me a picture, and that was it. She's, she's strong. Yeah. How, she many, how many people yeah, do you know that kill snakes at that age? <laughs> Not like she's a snake killer. Huh? <laughs> 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 killed one. But it was a black man. Yeah. You, uh -huh. you. you know, yeah. being able to understand what your children need. Mm. Because I grew up in an environment like this mm -hmm. myself with my mm. parents. Okay. And I had oh, sheep. Lovely. Okay. I had sheep, goats. Yeah. And I go to the bushes to cut grass. Yeah. Mm. And I bring to it to them. them. Oh, yeah. that's lovely. Sometimes I see snakes, I kill them, I come mm. back home. And then I grew up nicely, traveled everywhere I want to travel and still mm. come back to the villages. I'm more stronger. Look and at you, a fine young man. <laughs> see? <laughs> oh, my that goodness. For your children. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, though. You're a very <laughs> smart lady. Thank you. Mm. Okay, let's walk around and see <laughs> Thank how you the is. Okay. You want to go with us? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. So what do you see for this land in like <coughs> the next one to two years? Um, that we have food here, okay. that we have um, running water, okay. that we're capturing yeah. water, mm -hmm. that we are fully solar, okay. that we have families here, single parents here, okay. um, making that transition, mm. that we have um, some of the vulnerable youth that we spoke about earlier, yes. that we can offer that for free mm. and allow them to come here. So maybe like, you wow. know. From the UK? From the UK. Okay. So we want to be able to offer that for free, completely free. We want to be able to reach out to some of the groups we know in the UK, mm -hmm. mentors that are mentoring young children, and there's a lot of them. Wow. Um, that are struggling, that are vulnerable, and be able to bring them out here and have them experience what Tian has been experiencing, mm. cooking on fire and, wow. you know, conquering their fears of snakes and okay. these things like that and okay. making a transition. And, okay. and then we believe that with the, for your sake, the programming or no, the rites of passage that they will receive here will equip them better for going back to the UK mm -hmm. or give them the bug so they never want to go back. Okay. They actually, when I get older or when I can, I'm going to go and live like the kings. Mm -hmm. Now that yeah. is... If someone want this for themselves, mm. their family, what, what do they have to do? They want this lands, they want to be able to live independently, mm. off-grid. Then just do it. I mean, what's stopping you from doing it? But I mean, you on a, help if yes, someone? on a basic level, okay. let's have a conversation. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Email me. Okay. Let's have a conversation. Like, we can advise. Do you know what I mean? We can help. Um, we have been helping. We have been advising. Um, you know, and it's, 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 it's something that I know we wanted, but we didn't get it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to do is provide something. So this is what life is about. Mm. So the GoFundMe 
you're raising the money is for that. You guys have a GoFundMe? Yeah. Mm. Tell me about it. First of all, it's not for our lifestyle. Okay. <laughs> this is what, this is what you know. People say, so. I don't know what it is about the YouTube audience. Yeah. They are beautiful and brutal. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they're just like, well, why should we raise it? Why should we, you know, mm -hmm. like support your lifestyle? Mm -hmm. You're not supporting my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's not what that's about. All you have to do is read what it's about. Mm -hmm. And what it's mm -hmm. about is, is the pods that we have over there, the guest suites. Mm -hmm. It's about the people that you just spoke about that want to come here and don't know how. Mm -hmm. Well, come here. We have families coming here mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. We you told me in August. People in August, coming. yeah. We have people coming in August. Um, and that's because of the GoFundMe. The mm -hmm. GoFundMe has enabled us to start the first pod. Wow. Do you know what I mean? It's enabled us to start this and we have faith that, you know, more people will donate and we'll raise the money to build many more. Amen. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. All praises to the Most High for that. Wow. So, um, leave, how do we do that? I would leave it in the description. Yeah, you can okay. email, email okay. me. Okay. Email, email me. me. Okay. So, if you're watching this, you can always email them. It will be in the description or on the screen. You can send a message, email them and they will respond. Within... How many hours? Uh, <laughs> literally hours. People are very like surprised that I answer every single message. And yes, and I am surprised. There's LTE here, Wi-Fi. Oh, oh yeah, that, yeah, MTN. Yeah. We got we got Wi-Fi. That's like 4G. 4G. Yeah. In yeah. the middle of, of nowhere. Yeah, mm. we have it. We have it. <laughs> to be fair, when we first got here, we didn't have it. We didn't have anything. Really? So how what really? how did that happen? MTN people had to come here. No, no, no. It just I don't know. It just came. It just never had no it internet came. service when we yeah, got here. Yeah, it was no. the strangest thing. And one day we did. <laughs> You'd have but to you know like, go to certain places. Places, and, like, yeah. Don't reach. Do you know what really I think either. it is though? Yeah. In the beginning, I think yes, the most high didn't want us to have mm. Wi-Fi. Yeah, we're gonna okay. go soon. I think he wanted to strip us back, and that's what we did. We didn't have no TV. We didn't have no Wi-Fi, we didn't have no music other than what was on our phones. Mm. We didn't have no connection with the outside world. And I think that is how it was meant to be. Mm. It's like the wilderness before, and mm. then slowly he's given us mm. Wi-Fi, electric. We was really off grid. grid. Mm. At, like when we first came here, yeah. we was off grid. We had so no electric. No. no. We used I'd to take to, our like, phone. Walk to, to Kwame's house and go and use the uh, and charge it. Charge it there, and then he's wow. got a little bit of signal there. So. Wow. Gosh. Wow. It's a lot. <laughs> I must say, I can't do things you guys are doing. You and can't. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you can. You of did. Of course, you can. I have to always check my phone. Oh, uh, you'd I be surprised if you had to. Yeah. You would. Because and that's the choice. thing. Yeah, you have the choice. But if you didn't have the choice. You find that you just... Sometimes we have too much choice. Yeah. Way too much. Sometimes you just have... And you know free will can be dangerous. Choice. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You could be spoiled for choice. You don't know, you know what to do with it. I, I've, I got this message from someone. He said, mm. stop telling all black people to come to Africa and saying we are all Africans. We are not African. We are indigenous to the UK. What are you talking about? Hey? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Wait, they said that to yes, us? Uh, yeah. They, the, is that one the, of our comments? On the comments, I posted a video where oh, someone yours. said, oh, no. oh, okay. he was like, move from the US, come to Ghana. It's like, what are you on about? We, we are not Africans. We are indigenous to the land of the US. UK, what are you talking about? Some How people is that believe even that. Possible? You know yeah. what, yeah. No, some people believe so that. So that's though. their truth. Some people what believe. Do you have for those people? Then I don't have no message for you. If that's what you believe, who am I to try and change your belief? Mm. The only thing I care about is, are you a child of the Most High? Mm. That's what I care, yes, no. Like, where you're indigenous to, to be fair, I don't even know where I'm indigenous to. I couldn't tell you. Like, I couldn't tell you the full out truth, yes. Mm. The I'm line of your here. ancestry. My line of my right. ancestors lies here. Like, maybe I was traveling mm -hmm. from somewhere else and I was here and then captured as a slave. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I'm indigenous to. I mean, if you want to know the truth, then you just have to, like, seek it. And if you don't, then you yeah. just want to, like, believe whatever it is you've been told. So okay. I guess that's your choice. Let's hmm. go see the house and I'll have another question. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this is the infamous Kwame, I'll be telling you. No, that's yeah. Uncle Kwame. Yeah, Uncle, Uncle Kwame. Kwame. He'll come He's going to come. Yeah. Ah, ah. Good afternoon. Good morning, Tommy. No break. 
this is Mr. Kwame. Mm -hmm. You said you said so much. I wanted to ask you, what do you really like about the family? Oh, they are good and honest. Good and honest. Uh, wow. Since they come here, we never get any problem with them. Wow. Uh, that's why we like them. Wow. Well, I didn't mean they give us problem if we just <laughs> <laughs> shoot them out. <laughs> But they are living very happy. They are here. very nice and they are nice to the, all the community people mm. here. Do you see them as one of you? Oh, they are like we. Mm. Because we are the same. Mm. So Maybe. you don't see them to be like different from. No, the they are characters, no mean like they are different people. They are yours. Uh -huh. They are okay with us. Wow. Uh -huh. So if, if people watching from the diaspora want to do what this family has done, what would be your advice for them? Oh. They want to come to Ghana, you know, get land. Well, they are free to come. Yeah. Okay. Because IJB, they have program here. They won't invite people to come. That's true. Mm, and That's true. we that we are here, we don't have program. Wow. But when you give us program, we'll give you program. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. our character here. Mm -hmm. But when you are free with us, mm -hmm. and he, he used to give us work too, mm -hmm. for okay. people to okay. benefit from that Providing one. Providing jobs. Uh -huh. oh, so... I think they are okay with us. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to say, like, yeah. if it wasn't for this man, <laughs> like, we couldn't have done this this fast. This building. This, this building, this, like, when I said uh, me and another guy was on the roof, mm -hmm. here he is. He's. Yes. He was on the roof with me. Do you know what I mean? Showing me how to do the roof. Wow. Because he didn't want me to pay 38,000 CDs either. Do you know what I mean? Where he could have just thought, oh, he's rich, he can pay. But he said, no, come, let's do the roof and we did the roof so small things like that that's just one thing the abubia he came in on i seen this man drive this abubia from the other side of the eastern region in the rain for me from a Bree mountains to here in the rain for me he, he went and picked it up mm -hmm. like so, but me cool. i like them uh, we bring some people here but some of them is not good but for these people yeah, okay. Because of the outside. Uh -huh. If you are good to them, they will be good to you. Yes. <laughs> and yes, we don't have problem. No. Unless you give us problem. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. But they are okay. I like it. Thank you so much for really, you know, being there for uh, being there for them. Oh, okay. It means a lot. You are a good Ghanaian. I'm a good Ghanaian. Yeah. <laughs> good Ghanaian. We even okay. need more people to come. Yeah, really? Uh -huh. We need more people. Invite, throw an invitation. Uh -huh. They welcome, you see. We need more people. We have more land. Mm -hmm. So if they want it, they should come. Oh, really? But when you are not good, don't come here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, How will you be able to do it? Unless they come, they will be able to But I'm just advising them. <laughs> but when you are not good and you come here, we will push you out. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we are okay here with all of them. This mentality is like the Jamaican mentality. <laughs> Don't bother come around here with your bad mind. <laughs> it's the same thing. He said, if you're good, come. If you're not good, I beg, don't come. I beg, don't come. <laughs> yeah. So this is the house. Okay. This is the house, and then there's a guest suite at the end. Okay. Um, do you want to go inside? Okay. See? Let's go. Let's go. Today, the workers are not here. No, they're not here today. Okay. Um, one of their rare days off. Okay. Um, normally, they might be off on a Thursday okay. for communal service, but they're just not here today because they've got other things to do. So this is the living area, the living space. So living room or front room, as you call it. Um, and then here is the boys' bedroom mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And then on this side will be a bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, we call it in the UK a tiny house because mm -hmm. it's small. It's just enough to, you know, to what you need, basically. And then, you know, there'll be some steps here that will go up to this level, which is going to be the mezzanine level. Um, and a lot of people have questioned, well, where's Tian's room? Mm -hmm. Well, initially, we was going to put her in the guest suite. The, okay. Yeah, the guest suite next door. Because she's getting of age, because she is thriving like we showed you, like, we want to encourage her to keep that level up. So having her right there next door to us, Imagine having your own place at 16. I mean, many do in the UK, but it's liberating for her to be there, to be able to be responsible, mm -hmm. learn how to budget. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? She already knows how to cook. Do you know what I mean? She knows how to clean. So she's going to be in the guest suite and, you know, we're building other stuff. 
We're actually extending this home slightly just so that we have a kitchen. Um, it's not, it doesn't look smart to me. It's big. The roofing is. It's, it's tall, high, yeah. and that's that's the uh, the architectural feel that we wanted mm. to have. That when we designed it, that yeah. it wouldn't feel small because of the high ceiling. Like when Kwame said, he said, "Well, why don't we just run mm -hmm. this whole mezzanine across?" And we could have, and just had upstairs. But then it would feel small when you come in here. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, there's an upstairs, but in here would feel small. So we like the high ceiling because it gives that grand feel. So, yeah. It's very messy now because we built this concrete bed. So you said this is a bed? Yes. Okay. So this is going to be a bed. And people think, oh, you're going to sleep on concrete. But actually, this is going to look so beautiful when it's done. So we're going to polish it up. If you know, like, uh, like Greece. Greece, they have this very, this same sort of design. So everything will be like white and natural and, and smooth edges. But why did you choose to do it like this? Not um, wooden part. Well, the wood because of termites. Mm -hmm. um, we like the style of the concrete. Mm -hmm. And also we're out here in the bush mm -hmm. and my wife, she doesn't like bugs like that. Okay. Right? She loves nature, but she doesn't want, you know, underneath nothing can go underneath nothing's gonna eat this like ideally i would have done it in rammed earth but because of time i did it like this but going forward there's other methods okay. and yeah so this is the guest suite so this is like just a, a a bedroom area and then there's a small like kitchenette kind of area and then the bathroom outdoor shower okay. is through there so it's just you know it's what when you come here to life, so you, you gotta get what you need. People are watching right now. Mm -hmm. they want to come here. What do they have to do? Who do they have to speak to? You? They speak to me. Okay. Speak to me. Um, I deal with all that communications online and stuff. Okay. Email me. Let's have a conversation because obviously I have my family here. I have to provide and protect. So I'm not just putting it out for anybody. Like I know who is suitable and who qualifies to come here. So having a conversation, you know, you pick up on the spirit, you pick up on certain things, certain things. So, yeah. Thank you so much for, for you know, showing me around. It's a very nice place. Thank you. And Thank I, you. See, I see the vision. I'm sure you do. And I'm sure that you will add yourself to our list because mm -hmm. I'm challenging you. Mm -hmm. Nappy Briggs, mm -hmm. Natural Ghana Girl, um, Vanessa. Mm -hmm. Um, the Diaspora Channel. I'm, I'm, I'm challenging everybody that's come here and interviewed us mm -hmm. that you guys are going to come here and we're going to have a camping night over there. Oh, really? And I'm ready. When is it happening? Are you ready, yeah? I'm ready. You bring your tent and we're going to have some Jamaican style food. I have a tent food. in my car right now. You have a tent? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're ready. You're on. <laughs> Top of the list. You're, on, you're in. I always carry tents around. So you, we're going to have a nice yes. night and then everybody can get the update mm. of, of, you know, the, the previous interviews we've had. Mm -hmm. But we can show you what it's like to sleep here on life and also experience some Jamaican vibes. Yeah. So some rum punch, mm -hmm. some, some jerk chicken, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Some reggae music, yeah. all of these things. So, yeah, it's not really a challenge. Then it's, it, it, you're I'm already ready. ready. I'm ready to do that. Okay. I asked your boy, the first one. Yeah. I asked, what's your favorite music? Okay. He said he loves that. He loves it. Boy. <laughs> I'm Burner Boy. No, I know where he got that I'm from. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he loves it. He loves it. <laughs> Well, before we, we sign off completely, you know, people can can hate sometimes, but it's because they don't understand. Stand, okay? yeah. Someone said in a comment, what makes you think you didn't make it? They consider you didn't, I don't know why they think like that. Say, so why, if you don't make it in a first world country, how mm. can you make it in a third world country? Mentality. Mm. Mentality. I didn't say I can't make it mm. in a first world country. I just choose not to. Okay. The mentality is where you make it. You can make it wherever you want to make it. You can make it, I'm, at, I'm in the bush mm. and this is my definition of making it or success or mm. whatever you want to say. So I make it wherever I want to make it and they can as well. Wow. If you wake up, mm -hmm. okay, one day, mm -hmm. you just woke up and you are on your bed in the UK mm -hmm. and all this is just a dream. Mm -hmm. It's not real. If I woke up tomorrow yeah. and it wasn't real. Yeah. And you're going... Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? So I'm going to wake up.
I'm gonna stand to my wife and say, I just had the greatest dream that I was on the land and I was there with, with Nappy and I was on the, the, the African nation, the, the web nation, Africa. Like I was there in it live. I, it was the, I felt it, it felt good. And I'm gonna go and make my dream a reality. A lot of people in the comments say, that's my dream. Make it, I always reply to them, well, make it your reality. Or well, they say, that's my wish. I always say wishes come true. Uh, it's what you make it. Life is what you make it. You want to be a content creator, right? Mm -hmm. Are you a content creator? Yes. I want you to be an architect. Mm -hmm. I'm an architect. Do you know me? Wow. I want to be free, so I'd be free. Why do you think it's very difficult for people to make moves like this? To just leave the UK behind and just start a new beginning? Why do you think it's difficult for most people? Mentality. Mentality. They're comfortable. But what did you make different though? Sorry to cut mm. you. What did you make different though that made you adapt so easy though? I think because people it, came and they left. Yeah, I think for me, I know one thing for me, I'm going to speak as a Jamaican now. Okay. That if you can do Jamaica, mm -hmm. it's very easy to do Africa. Or it's easier mm -hmm. to do Africa because the mentality is very similar. The way of the land is very similar. This looks like Jamaica to me. But if you... You know, if you're not, or any Caribbean island that is, not just Jamaica, because I've heard other mm -hmm. people from the Caribbean say that. But if you're just simply from the UK, and that's all you've known, it's very hard um, to, first of all, not believe the lies that are told about Africa, because many lies are told about mm -hmm. Africa, but also to just make that transition and, and step out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. People get comfortable, mm -hmm. and they are reluctant to step out of their comfort zone. I've not been comfortable for mm -hmm. a year and a half. Like, do you know what I mean? I've not been comfortable. I've not had my own space. I've been renting, I've been in a hotel. I've been in that tent. Mm -hmm. It's not comfortable no more. But I had to step out of my comfortable to make comfortable, to make my own. This is going to be comfortable. Do you know what I mean? You want to say you're tired of the tent? I'm tired. Of, we're all tired of the tent. <laughs> you didn't see yesterday's live. You didn't see our live on oh, YouTube. Really? Ah, go watch it. We was telling the real truth yesterday really? on life about how tired we are of living in that damn tent. Wow. Like the tent mm -hmm. is, you know, is getting moldy. The rain is, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Where it's the second rainy season. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. That tent is not easy. It's big and it used to be nice. The first night was great. You should have asked me about yesterday's <laughs> night. Do you know what I mean? Like the zip is broken. Oh, wow. Do you know what I mean? Like we have to sew it up mm -hmm. a certain time. Hey brother, it's, it's, it's a living nightmare mm. in that tent, if I'm being honest with you. But we know what's ahead of us. Yes. We wake up to see this. We wake up to progress of this. Yeah. That's what keeps us going in that tent. Mm. We have arguments. Me and my wife have arguments in that tent. Close proximity. Mm. The relationship gets strained at times. Mm. I'm not afraid to tell, to tell the people, they need to know this, that when you come, if you want to do this, be prepared. Wow. Be prepared because... Africa will give you what you need. Mm. Ghana will give you what you need because there's a spirit here. The, the Most High resides here. And when he comes, he knows what you need. And what we needed to, to do is be in close proximity in that tent wow. so we could deal with each other's issues, so we could deal with ourselves. Our child spoke about she gets more time to herself. That's what she needed. Mm -hmm. More time to herself and less away from the influences. And then we can choose who you influence with. We meet a good family with good, a, a good stock of children. Mm -hmm. Your children can mingle with mine. That's arranged marriage, low P. <laughs> that's, that's a low P arranged marriage right there without saying this is who you're going to marry. Mm -hmm. No, we put ourselves in places right. with good people. So then she go and see the good son of the good family. That's true. Do you think it's all worth it? Yes. It's, it's all been worth it for me to see my children happy mm. running around, to see them learning, mm -hmm. to see them smiling, mm -hmm. to see um, Jarrell have a sense of freedom, mm -hmm. to feel what I feel when I build this home. It makes me feel like a man, mm -hmm. like I'm doing something, like I'm, I'm, I'm being rewarded from the sweat of my <laughs> brow. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I used to be a man that used to make money on, on, online. Mm -hmm. I can still make money online, yes. but hard work, shoveling, creating this path, mixing cement with, the, with our workers. Like, that's real man stuff. Like, one thing I didn't have, I didn't have a father to say, come on, son, let's go and do this. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But these people here, they show me a way that hard work and it, it, it gives you awards. Wow. 
Do you know what I mean? So, no regrets. I like that. So, message for the diasporans watching. Message for the diasporans watching. Well, I think my daughter said it all when she said, be prepared. Mm. Be prepared. Come with no expectations. Um, and be open. Mm -hmm. Don't come here with your, your, your Western mentality. Because... Yeah, 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 Kwame, they will fix you. Mm -hmm. They will fix you. Like, don't come here with no bad intentions. Mm -hmm. Integrate with your community. Mm -hmm. Like, come off of that, 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 uh, that high horse that the West puts you on, that you're better than everybody else. Come off of that and realise that you're not better than everybody else mm -hmm. and that there are people here living different lives to you. That doesn't mean that they have, you know, their blood is a different colour. Doesn't matter what colour skin they are. Wow. I'm not just talking to black people. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to children of the Most High. If you feel to come to Africa, come to Africa. Come, because it will, it will give you what you need. And if you're not meant to be here, it will throw you out. I'm telling you. This is the end of the conversation. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, for those watching, what would be the last message before we, we sign off? Um, last message before we sign off is just, for those that receive the message in this, that resonate with us or resonate with my daughter or resonate with my partner or resonate with the boys. What is it about it that resonates with you? And then analyze what you're gonna do with that information and how you're gonna move forward in your future. It's not always about leaving where you're at, but maybe it just changes your mentality and the way you think. Maybe it stops you from, you know, being so consuming and, and living more of a natural life. But on a last word, Brother, I, I applaud you mm. because me and my wife, we spoke about you yesterday mm. and about this interview mm. and how it would be. Okay. And it has been everything that we wanted it to be. You have asked some provoking questions. You've asked some questions that people have asked. And I didn't want this to be another run of the mill interview. So I commend you for, for, for being brave enough mm to step out and... I've had to try to rebrave. <laughs> ah, and you probably got some questions in there that you haven't asked. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I commend you for that because you did something different. And I, I say to all content creators like out there, mm -hmm. especially in Ghana, like there's so much that you can... Not everybody has to jump on the same thing. Like there's so much that we can all do. I love the, the content creators of Ghana. Like I think they're innovative. Mm -hmm. and show people that, you know, Africa can be a superpower, not just mm -hmm. the UK or... Do you think Ghana is better than the UK? Yeah, yeah, point blank, yeah. I prefer it to the UK. Mm. Also, I've been in the UK. Wow. Right, I've been to Zimbabwe, I love Zimbabwe. Mm. Absolutely love Zimbabwe, but I prefer to live in Ghana. Wow, wow. Where, where do you see the future of content creators in Ghana? How do you see the future? Uh, I see... I see them being very successful. Mm. And the reason why is because they have, they're like griots. They have a knowledge of Africa that the world needs to hear. Mm. So we all know who you are. I don't need to name names. I feel that if we just continue on that wave and show the positive side of Africa mm -hmm. and the negative, mm. like there's a yeah. balance. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. Do you think it's enough information to really tell people what Africa or Ghana really looks like? Yeah. Yeah. You think Show them what it really looks like because I'll tell you what it really looks like. It doesn't look like what the West says it looks mm. like. And all we have to do is just paint our own picture. Mm. Like stop making them create the story and let's create our own story. Let's create the story of Africa that we know. Do you know what I mean? Of, of, of Ghana that we know. Because there's many countries in Africa. We talk about it like it's one place. Mm. There's many countries here, but let's paint the pic, let's rewrite the picture and change people's mentalities of what Africa is actually about because it's a beautiful place. Mm. There's not people swinging from the trees. <laughs> There's not monkeys everywhere. Like it's not, you know, just yeah. mud huts. It's not that, it's, it's beautiful. Mm. Have you seen the infrastructure in Accra? Yeah. Like, come on, like, have you been to the nightlife in Accra? Everything that they want in the UK and it's here. The nightlife is better here. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You know, party, they'll party out the UK all day long. Like you can't, yeah. You can't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Ghanaian when it comes to partying. They will dance to one song for 15 minutes. I, I, I see it in the, in the funeral, they're just there. I'm just like, whoa, they got stamina. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, you can't do did that. You, did you do the night life in Accra before? Did I do? Yeah, where you came? Did I do the what? Night life. Did you do some? Nightlife is not really for me. I did touch it a little bit. We're more like the lounge bar type. Yeah. Okay. So we like to go to a lounge bar, <laughs> listen to live music. That's my thing. Mm. But I've seen the nightlife here. Mm. I've seen it and I've seen the funerals mm -hmm. and I know that my people got stamina. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They, they can party all day long. And I see my friends come in and having a nightlife and now, someone asked me to ask you this question. You know, they had a family who moved back. And mm -hmm. They wanted to live like they used to live in the UK. Mm -hmm. You know, five star, um, big house. Mm -hmm. They don't even have swimming pool in the UK, mm -hmm. but they got a house with swimming pool, oh, other lavish stuff mm -hmm. that they realized sooner that it's not sustainable. Mm. So some of them left, some of them are still here, but chose something very different. If someone is moving back and they want to maintain or even increase their lifestyle, what would be the best advice for them? I think if you want to, don't try and, and replicate your life that you had in the UK. Mm. Come here and create a life for yourself that, okay. that is for you. I couldn't have a swimming pool in the UK, but I'm currently building one here. Like I couldn't afford a swimming pool and I, I don't have the space to build one myself, but I got it here. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't build my own house, but I got it here. Do you know what I mean? If you asked the price earlier, yeah. so far I'd say about 15,000 pounds. Wow. 15,000 pounds. I can't do the CDs conversion now, but 15,000 pounds, that's unheard of well, in, in the, the UK. Land and everything. No, just the house. Just, okay. just the house. 15,000 pounds just for the house. Okay. Um, I couldn't do that in the UK. Okay. We're talking at least a hundred thousand minimum pounds to start Something like, like this. Do you know what I mean? So I, you can do things here that you can't do in the West. Mm. And there's things here you can't do that you could do in the West. And I just choose to, to, to live this life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I can't just go and have, you know, like any disputes here, we settle it with our chief. We mm -hmm. sit down mm -hmm. the old African way mm -hmm. and the elders come around and they hear you out and you settle your disputes. Oh, the border. Well, let, let's sit down and talk about it. Where in Jamaica, that's not how we do things. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do, you know, they use violence. Mm -hmm. In the UK, that's not how we do things. Mm -hmm. They use these court systems and they have somebody else that's not even interested in what they're doing, who is maybe racist and maybe biased to dictate the outcome. But here, it's a fair community. Mm -hmm. We sit down like men, the men, they sit down, some of the women too, mm -hmm. and we, we talk it out. Wow. So this lifestyle, mm -hmm. big land, two mm -hmm. acres plus, putting out beautiful house, mm -hmm. spent 15,000 just on the building. Mm -hmm. Who do you think can live this lifestyle? Rich or poor? What, what, people want to do this. Is it for the rich or even someone considered to be poor in the Western can still afford something like that. Well, I ain't rich mm. and I ain't poor. Mm. So I'd say anybody who could put their mind to it can do this. Did this cost money? Mm. Yes, it did. Can everybody obtain 15,000 pounds? No, but you can change your mentality and you could put down small, 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 small and build one house, for one room first and then extend on it. This didn't start, this started as a garage. That's what I was building. Then we added a bathroom and said, let's just get out of the tent and do one room and a bathroom. And then we saw how fast that went up and then we added a bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then we said, oh, let's extend it that way. And, then we and it's just slowly, slowly evolved. And I never had 15,000 to say, this is the budget. It was just a bit here, a bit here, a bit there. So I believe that if you have the right mentality, anybody can do this. This is not a rich or poor thing. This is a human thing. This is a mankind thing as a man. If you can't afford the blocks, you can build them. You can make them yourself. There's sand here. Like everything I need to make these blocks is here. I don't even have to use cement if I didn't want to. I could use rammed earth and just build a house without the cement, which we will do in the future. Mm. But currently, this is what will go up the fastest so that we're able to get out the tent. So this is not, this is not targeted. This is for everybody. Thank you so much for talking to me. You're welcome, brother. You're welcome. This is what we do in Jamaica, oh. like okay. this. Yes. Okay. And then put it on your heart. I can put it on your heart. So you do this way. And then yeah. Okay. Yeah, rub it in. Like uh-huh. And then yeah. Alright, so <laughs> thank you so much for watching. If it's your first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. 
and my name is Hayford and I have here with me the life with the Kings if you want to check them out they also have a YouTube channel you can go on their YouTube channel and check out their lifestyle how they you know they wake up every morning what they do how they are building their new uh, home how they you know acquire the line so many information if you want to talk to them you know seek kind of consultation they would be there to do that for you. so it's been a very great conversation with the family and yes peace out thank you for watching